But more importantly, you're here to talk about issues of sustainability in higher education. And I would like to invite uh, my colleague Ahmed to uh, begin his presentation. Uh, good morning. I am uh, Ahmed Madakali from Odibadama University, Yola, at the Master. This is the title of my paper, the Sustainable Learning Adoption in uh, Nigerian Descent Learning Environment. It is very fresh in our memories, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, when it came, how we reacted, so many things happened, and uh, uh, we still remember the universities were closed for yeah, and so there were quite a lot of challenges that came up. Some we we saw them coming, and some we were not expecting. So uh, the pandemic actually came uh, with effects that uh, have affected us. Effects on our our universities uh, in two ways: the positive and the negative. Of course, the negative. You know, when the universities were closed, uh, children were at home, and so many other things. The positive aspect of it is that uh, it has forced us as universities to rethink how we deliver uh, our services. We all know uh, our problems in Nigeria University are quite enormous now. Coming of uh, COVID-19, you know, coupled with the problems on ground, things went bad. So uh, a lot of ideas started coming on how to solve future problems. Now, uh, with the development in technology, there are quite a uh, new thinking on how to adopt technology to, to, to deliver as universities. Uh, technology has given us a lot of advantages. There are so many tools, so many apps that we can incorporate in, in our learning activities. Um, <clears throat> the idea of mobile learning has been there for quite a while, but uh, for some reasons, you know, uh, mostly, most especially in developing countries, we are yet to adapt. Uh, uh, this have to do with uh, technology, the technical know-how of it, and the capability of our learners to cope with. So uh, this study is necessitated by the fact that uh, uh, we need to find solutions to our problems as investors. And one of the solutions is to bring in technology to play key role in how we, we deliver. So uh, <clears throat> there are quite uh, a number of options, but I believe uh, mobile learning should be a starting point, especially when we are going to engage in the, the blended form of learning. Uh, it has the potential to address some of the university's problems, especially that access uh, you know, overcrowded uh, uh, lecture halls and so on and so forth. As I was saying, uh, mobile learning has the potential to address some of our problems, uh, such as uh, uh, problem of access, uh, problem of availability uh, of infrastructure. You, you, you know, you find a lecture hall meant for about thirty or hundred students been occupied at the time by about 200 and so most of those infrastructure facilities are overstretched. Now um, there are quite a number of studies that have looked at mobile learning adoption among students. Um, quite few of them actually linked that adoption to uh, sustainability. Well you have most of them, most of these studies focus on advanced countries, very few uh, have really considered uh, 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 I mean the experience of developing countries. So uh, <clears throat> this formed the basis of uh, picking this particular study. 
we we notice the gap in knowledge. Uh, mobile learning has taken off, doing well in advanced countries. We are struggling to adopt it, and there is no available literature that explains or that provide understanding on what factors actually facilitate adoption among students. And uh, even in, in the existing literature, most of the studies actually focused on, on uh, the young students in the conventional universities. Now, looking at our <coughs> centers for distance learning, where we mostly have, like in my university, in our center, we mostly have majority of the learners are mature students. Majority of them, they are married men, women, working, uh, you know, and, and so on. So uh, now we, this particular study focus on the, the mature students. What folks do they really think will, uh, will make them adopt, use, and accept mobile learning? Uh, uh, quite a number of uh, uh, the teachers have been reviewed, and uh, <clears throat> this student, this study, sorry, uh, focused on. Sorry, there are quite a few studies that have talked about uh, uh, mature students in Nigerian universities. Uh, the ones I was able to lay my hands on, you know, there's a report that most of the, the mature students in Nigeria prefer to, to participate in part-time courses due to the nature of their, uh, their work. And uh, compared to, them, to young ones, uh, there are also reports of uh, uh, adults, you know, having difficulties in using digital tools and so on. So now investigating the Behavioral intention of uh, uh, mature students, I think, is handy uh, at present. So, based on uh, based on that, based on the literature review, uh, we came up with uh, with a conceptual framework uh, based on the UTAD model, the five uh, uh, theory of technology adoption. So, uh, this. For uh, construct, the performance expectation, uh, effort expectation, social influence, and facilitating conditions uh, originally from the Utah model. So these are external variables added to the model in order to, to study behavior. Based on this model, uh, we have uh, developed hypotheses about certain of them. Uh, we want to find out whether uh, there's, a, there's a relationship or effect of learners' intention and use uh, uh, of uh, effort expectation on learners' intention. Uh, second hypothesis tries to, to, to look at uh, performance expectancy and uh, learners' intention. We have the social influence for setting condition, creativity, readiness. Uh, playing role, uh, what role, direct uh, role, as well as mediating role. These are the, the remaining uh, uh, hypotheses about a team. Now, uh, to, to achieve this goal, we developed uh, a questionnaire, fat liquid scale questionnaire. Uh, with about uh, uh, eight items, as you have here. <laughs> These items, the, the initial items, the, the uh, as performance expectation, expectancy, effort expectancy, facilitating condition, and uh, social influence, were originally from uh, uh, Utah model, so from uh, the auto. Venkatesh Ven Ven 2003. The other remaining items were adapted from uh, other uh, studies. 
which include trust adopted from from uh, a study conducted by Kali and Masu, while uh, readiness items were adapted from Boy and Kabaka. Similarly, the items of creativity were adapted from uh, uh, others. Now, um, based on the data collected from the uh, administration of the questionnaire, the analysis shows that the, 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 there is no much difference in, the, in gender based on the respondents, most close, male were 229, the female were 200, and, uh, and, uh, and that's true because in, in the center in which this study was conducted, we have an uh, almost equal number of uh, <coughs> and, uh, women tend to uh, have more interest in technology research than the men for whatever reason. Now, the, most of the respondents uh, use Android phones. We, we give them the opportunity to, to choose more than one option in the type of mobile device they use. So uh, about uh, 455, a total of 591 responses were recorded from the 455 respondents. Some choose, some you know, pick more than one or two or three options. So and then we have about uh, 500 and, uh, and uh, 91 responses. Now, out of which smartphone, about 430 or 73 percent said they are using smartphones, uh, laptop about 15 percent, tablet about 14 percent, and then digital notebook. And others mentioned others. Some of them mentioned others that are about seven of them. So uh, the reasons why they use mobile devices, you know, this particular option or uh, question also has uh, multiple options. So uh, most of the reasons for using is uh, include communication. It's about 31% use their mobile devices for the purpose of communication. Others use it for, for education. Uh, uh, quite many of them also use uh, their, more, their phones for the purpose of conducting research. Others use it for entertainment. And then others, about nine of them, have other purpose why they. Then uh, when we seek for their knowledge, what to you know the level of knowledge they have in using mobile device or devices. Uh, most of them mention very good, about 34% uh, of the respondents are very good in that. Uh, about 32% uh, believe they are good, while 27% uh, of them believe they have fair knowledge uh, excellent knowledge of using mobile devices, while the uh, five point nine percent believe we have uh, fair knowledge. Now, on experience, uh, most of them actually have experiences of using ranging from uh, three years to, to eleven years. Uh, most of them mention they have been using uh, <coughs> mobile devices for over 11 years, uh, that's about 50%, 27% uh, uh, have been using, uh, sorry, 11%, that's about 50%, then seven to 10 years, that's about 27%, and then three to, to four to six years, about 14, uh, about 10%, and then one to three years, about uh, eight percent. Now, average time they spent in using uh, their mobile devices, uh, about thirty-nine percent said they are using it uh, less than uh, this be yeah three to three to five hours, about twenty-four percent. One to two hours, sixteen percent. Two to three hours, the, the uh, about fourteen percent of them spend two to three hours in trying to in using their phones and so. Then uh, uh, five hours or five point one percent. 
do that. Now, in uh, analyzing the data collected, we use SPSS and Smart PLS. Uh, SPSS version 24, we use it in, uh, in the descriptive analysis, while the, the partially square that's a PLSM is used in evaluating the uh, measurement model and the uh, <coughs> structural model to determine the relationship area proposed. Now, uh, in the module model, the study assesses the reliability and validity of the console in addition to the factor loadings of the items of every uh, console. Now, uh, in the study, the items factor loadings, internal consistency, reliability, and then we have, in terms of validity, we have the content, uh, sorry, convergent and discriminant validity. Likewise, in, the, in assessing the factor, factor loadings, uh, we use the, in, in assessing the, the reliability, we use the Kronbach alpha and the composite reliability. While in, in assessing the validity, we used the uh, uh, back, sorry, for reliability, we use Kronbach alpha, and for, for validity, we use convergent, uh, uh, for validity, sorry, for convergent, we use uh, average variance extracted, yes. Um, this is the table for the, now, to determine the discriminant validity, we use the final like, uh, criterion and petrol trade, monotrade ratio uh, as presented in the table. Uh, they are all okay, the values uh, uh, met up the threshold required for uh, determining uh, discriminant validity, as you can see, the values. Uh, this is the model. Uh, you can see the, uh, the values, uh, the factor loadings. They are all above zero point seven as required. Uh, <coughs> now the, the structural model is evaluated based on the R square and the Q square. What significance as presented in, in uh, this table? Table four. You can see from the the, the value. And the, the, the Q, the Q, the R square and the, the, the Q square. The R square, this tells us about the, the, the predictive ability of, uh, of the model. That's uh, intention, you know, those constructs were able to influence predict intention by about uh, 80%. <coughs> While the readiness, uh, construct was able to predict intention by about 57%, which is okay. Now, uh, the result of the structural models after running, uh, I discovered that uh, effort expectation has significant positive effect on learner uh, intention, while performance expectancy also had significant effect on learner intention as well as trust. Uh, as you can see, based on the result, the direct relationship, uh, three of the six hypotheses that have direct relation were, were supported. Uh, and while uh, the, well, the, the remaining three were not supported by but so the relationship between creativity and intention was supported. The relationship between <coughs> performance expectancy and intention was supported as well as the relationship between uh, trust and intention. Equally, as you can see, the structural model showing the direct relationship. Uh, <coughs> we also have mediation. As, as you have seen at the beginning of the presentation, the uh, readiness construct is a mediator between the various uh, relationships as hypothesized earlier. Uh, the result shows that uh, 
uh, readiness was able to mediate between creativity and intention, as well as uh, between uh, social influence and intention. Uh, uh, it, was, it has also mediated the result between the relationship between trust and intention, as well as uh, uh, the relationship between facilitating condition and, uh, and rate and intention. This is the model. So readiness uh, has been proven to be a very strong uh, uh, mediator when it comes to, to <coughs> learner intention to use mobile learning. Now, what are the implications of this uh, particular findings? Um, as you remember, we said this, this particular study is based on uh, sustainability of mobile learning adoption. Uh, what the literature says is, for you to have a, a, a sustainable mobile learning system practice, uh, one of you must have about key, key factors must come into play. One of it is that the students or learners whom the mobile learning is meant for should be willing and able to accept and use it. So uh, based on that, the finding that creativity has no, no influence on retention to use mobile learning implies that mature learners do not perceive mobile learning as a tool for creative expression. So what do we do in this sense? Uh, it means that the stakeholders, is it policymakers, those in education, uh, management of universities, who are in charge of distance learning should deploy mobile learning experiences that integrate creative activities into it. Creativity, uh, you know, their, their, their own personal creativity has no input in influencing their decision to use mobile learning. So uh, <clears throat> that should be embedded and it can be done by including, uh, you know, some multimedia tools such as videos, pictures and, and others. Uh, defining on uh, effort expectancy having a positive influence on retention means that mature learners have a strong belief that mobile learning systems or, uh, or platforms are easy to use. You know, so when, when, when you believe something is easy, a system, a technology is easy for you to use, there's every likelihood that you, you spend a lot of time, energy in trying to make use of it. So, so uh, in this sense, there is need to integrate mobile learning uh, into our traditional educational practice. What we do now is uh, more of face-to-face. -face. So we need to blend to bring in more of uh, online learning experience into it. And then there is also need for mobile learning platforms to be user-centered, to be user-friendly, to take into cognizance the special needs of users and then integrate them into it. There's also need for mobile uh, learning platform to, to, to ensure that uh, uh, the, the system, the system recognizes their special needs so that uh, uh, when such need arises, you know, they can be catered for. Uh, the, the other findings which uh, talked about uh, 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 effort expectancy or oh, performance expectancy. Now, the implication is that learners are not necessarily influenced by external uh, uh, by external factors. That you know, this this particular findings on uh, what we call uh, facilities, right? Yes. Uh, the support, you know, they expect from the, the universities. In, in, in this case, they, they are not necessarily influenced by external factors like uh, structures and what have you uh, <coughs> that make it easier to use technology such as access to device. And, uh, therefore, developers of mobile learning systems should focus on creative technology that is easy to use and intuitive regardless of this <coughs> external factors, other factors that we, 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 we consider like uh, internet 
availability. And it's also possible that the policymakers and education should uh, rely solely on external factors, and forest adoption, and so on. Uh, when learners believe that using mobile learning will improve their performance, there's every likelihood that they are going to adopt it. Simple, this simply means what, that uh, we should try to, to meet up their expectation. Now, if we do that, then uh, in our mobile learning uh, sustainability will be assured. Uh, uh, the, the next finding uh, calls for uh, formulating strategies and uh, for embedding and promoting social learning. The fact that uh, social influence does not in any way influence their mm -hmm. behaviors to adopt or to use mobile learning, there is need also to, to make sure that uh, the universities or our centers incorporate some of these uh, social factors into it. For instance, they can emphasize on the uh, on, uh, uh, peer mentoring, you know, group assignments, and so on. Uh, uh, next is that uh, <coughs> the stakeholders in distance and, and online learning should, should try to build in trust into the system. Uh, the user of the technology wants to be very sure that his personal data right, and uh, uh, the performance in the system are safe and secure. We want to be sure that uh, the data he provides are not uh, meant for external consumption, but for purpose of uh, academic uh, and other uh, lens. So they should focus on building trust in the mobile learning environment by providing reliable information in a transparent way about mobile learning system and ensure that data uh, privacy and security is always there. Now, uh, other implications include, for instance, most especially in the findings on mediation. The creativity and learner readiness are important factors in mobile learning adoption and calls for tailoring uh, mobile learning that fosters creativity, improves learning experience, and ensure sustainability. This is important because uh, uh, when learner brings in his own personal creativity into learning activities, and uh, uh, he, he had this uh, readiness, he being ready for it, having the phone that can take care of that, having access to internet, having basic knowledge on how to use the mobile learning system, you know, that will, will improve the experience in it and uh, ensure sustainability because when when you, you are ready for it and you believe in that using your your capacity or having uh, self-efficacy in terms of using there's every likelihood that you continue using it. And the, the influence of peers and collaborative learning may drive intention among learners when they possess what is required. To engage in mobile and therefore it is uh, <coughs> expected that uh, uh, promoters of distance and uh, online education to promote peer learning, collaboration, recognition, and uh, make available uh, feedback mechanism that is effective. Uh, uh, focus should also be on designing mobile learning environment that build trust so that that can build learner readiness and user that builds learner user readiness and user friendliness and there should be uh, continuous support to learners when you continuously support them when they have problems you solve their problems when they need information you provide when they they they, they want you to uh, explain something in a way they understand you do that you know feedback is important when they do their assignment, you make sure the feedback is, is strong and so on. That will help a lot. And then uh, there's also need to, to deploy appropriate technology, such as ICT facilities, as we have here, uh, internet connectivity, and so on. If you are able to make this available, that will also uh, help in the sustainability of uh, 
mobile name. Now, uh, the, the study is, uh, is limited by the fact that uh, it was conducted in a distance learning center uh, and focus only on mature students who have different categories of students. Uh, the findings of the study therefore underscores the need for further studies to consider other stakeholders in mobile learning, mobile and distance uh, learning, education, and in order to understand the complex process of learner, learners' adoption of sustainable mobile learning and distance learning. Thank you. Colleagues, if I could ask if you have any questions for you. Uh, our presenter. I have plenty, but I'm going to go with the lady in the red top and then that lady in the red top and then the gentleman. Okay, please. Okay, um, thank you for that presentation. A couple of cases you mentioned the, you mentioned the, um, the intention, you mentioned the intention that on the top of the learners, yes. intention, learners. So what really do you mean by this intention? How measured is intention? That's one. Okay. Then I don't know if it's possible to go back to where, uh, where you have average time. That's like where you have average time spent on social science. So, because I have an observation that you have less than you have less than one hour, eh? and then you have five, three to five hours, and then one to two hours, two to three hours. Number one, I think it's better to arrange them in, in order. But apart from that, why do you have after having three to five hours, you're not having five hours? Is, it not so, is that not supposed to be maybe a book? It should be six, six, hours six, and six, book. six hours and a uh, book. Yeah, book. Six hours and a book. Right. Yeah, that's that's, that's Thank what I think. Okay, six so I'm going to ask if we take the questions and then we'll answer them all together because we do have our next presenter online. So, Sam, please. Yeah, I just, I guess I'm wondering how that effort expectation was framed because when I see that, I assume that it's effort for learning. Was it effort in their, ex, you know, their expected effort in how much effort they'd have to put into learning, or was it for the device? And that's where I was a bit confused. The effort expectancy, took, yeah. referring to it? But what was the question that was asked? Because I could see that as two different so No, uh, two they, they were asked on the, the, the effort expected from them but to use from, from the respondents. But, but for what? They are so Say again. The effort needed to use the device. Or yes, the you, they're expected to put into the learning because they're quite different things. No, no, no. The effort expected for them into the learning, the efforts they spend in learning in using mobile learning system. That's why we're okay. But then there's still. I might ask you this later because there's still two questions in that I'm not sure. Okay. okay. So. So. I have three things to say. Right. Three. Be quick. No, sorry, I won't be quick. The first one is on the first or the second day as slides. Okay, looking at the first slide, uh, the first bullet point talks about COVID 19. Second one, they are uh, looking at the in text citation. Uh, Mr. Lam, look at okay. And then uh, I can see the Lalo one, 2018. Yeah. I think. That's mm. that should be expunged because 2018 cannot answer for 2020. Yes. No, no, here, what I, I'm trying to support uh, uh, the problems we have in Nigeria. That bullet point is talking about pandemic. Um, that bullet point. What, what I say, pandemic has exposed, exposed. many. Yeah, Among others, the inadequacies. The inadequacies. The inadequacies were there before the pandemic. So please and try to understand that. You understand? These inadequacies have been there before pandemic. 
That's what they're trying to say. Yeah. Because this is the inadequacies in the system. Your third point, sir. Your third point. Those two, the first, the second one, the, the, the second slide. I think uh, chronologically, what we have on the second slide should have come before the first slide. Okay. Because uh, looking at it, the last two decades, it should have been chronologically talking about what has been happening before coming to pandemic of the first slide. So that's the second point. Then the third point on the reliability on half square. Let's go to half square. Here we have half square. Good. The arm spread on interest is 0.183, which is 18%. It shows that interest is not a reliable predictor. In, in this intention, not interest. Okay, intention is not a reliable mm. predictor. Yes. It should have either been surprised or expunged and replaced. No, no, no. No, no. So any value, have... look at the, two, the rule of this. Any value. Uh, of uh, we're talking about R, R square, right? It's only square. Oh, no, R square, you know, any value from from 10 and above is weak yes. with prediction. Any value from uh, I think uh, 30 to 50 is moderate, then we are up to about 70 and so except. So you cannot expunge because it, uh, even if you have one, if it is able it's to explain. No, no, what, this is a different thing in time. That's a different thing in time. Because you are, yeah, the motion. So any other? Thank you. All right, thank you. We're going to go to our next presentation.